What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel and welcome if you are new. Today, what I'm gonna be doing is a little bit of a refresh. A few years back, I did a video on custom playbooks and how to implement them with CPU versus CPU. And today, I'm gonna be doing a refresh of that video with Madden 25. Um, the reason for that is I've had a few questions over the years of people asking me, hey, you know, is this, has anything changed? Is this different? Can I use this still? And uh, after a certain amount of time, obviously that video is not really relevant anymore to a lot of people. Nobody's searching for Madden 23. So I figured let's just go ahead and let's do a refresh for Madden 25 and help out those who are trying to maybe dabble a little bit into custom playbooks. So again, this is gonna be for CPU versus CPU. If you are using this to play the game, this video is not intended for you. I would still like you to watch it. You might pick up a few things, I don't know. But just know that this is not the most ideal way for you to build a playbook if you are planning to user the playbook. This is only for CPU versus CPU. So we are here on the main menu, of course, and we're gonna go down to Creation Center. We're gonna go to Playbooks. And you're gonna see this screen, Offense, Defense, you're just gonna pick the team. And what I would like to start off by saying, I do not recommend that you build a playbook from the ground up for CPU versus CPU. The reason for that is I believe that somewhere in all of this coding, behind the scenes for CPU play. There's something else in these books that is like programming because when I have built books from the ground up for CPU, it never turns out properly. I don't necessarily have a understanding of why that happens. I just know it's never really worked that well. So what I recommend you do is that you find a book or maybe you already have one that maybe you already sort of like, but it's just not exactly what you want. You want you need to tweak it a little bit. Maybe there's a, a formation that you would just love if this playbook had, or a certain amount of plays that this playbook had, and it just doesn't have it, but you like a good chunk of it. That's where you're gonna find your best success. If you take one of these books, adjust it for what is in there, and maybe add a formation or two. So we're gonna start off by doing that. I'm just gonna take you through what I would do if I was to create a playbook and hopefully it helps you guys understand how this process works and how to better understand the playbook process when it comes to refining it to what you want. So it doesn't really matter which playbook we use. We're just gonna go with, um, we'll go with the Packers playbook. It seems a little weird because most of you guys probably know I'm a Vikings fan, but the Packers have a good playbook. They have for years. It pains me to say it, but that is just the truth. Once you select a playbook, it's gonna take you to this screen. Now, this is something you're gonna wanna set way after. This is like the last thing that you should do. This is your audible screen. So when your quarterback checks out of a play, these are the plays that they're going to be able to choose from to swap to. So this is important for CPU still. I'm not 100% sure how often they do call the audibles at the line. You know, you do see some changing around and whatnot. So I do know what happens from time to time. I just don't know exactly the, like how in depth it is, but I still make sure to do this anytime that I make a playbook. But again, this is the last step once you have everything in here. The next tab over is my playbook. So this is going to be every single formation and play that you have in your playbook already. So if you click on L2 or if you are on Xbox L, I believe it's LT or the, the trigger left trigger, this box will pop down. You can go between any of the different formations. And then once you're on one that has more than one set in the formation, you'll see the R2 or RT pop up. And if you hold that down, it'll show you the different sets within that particular formation. And now what a lot of people don't understand is that these playbooks are only built of about maybe 20 plays. There really isn't that many plays in the actual game plan, which is what we'll get to in a second. When you get into this and you look at these plays, for instance, halfback dive here has three and a half stars filled in and then has half stars for backed up goal line, third and short, run out clock and red zone fringe. That means that that play is added to your game plan, which is here on the end. And if you don't see anything like these two plays here, none of them have a star anywhere. That means that this playbook does not necessarily call this play in your game plan for CPU. Now, can it be called? Yes, it can be called, but it's very unlikely that it will get called. And it's if there's a play in here that you really like, let's say, I don't know, this power O play, and you were just expecting it to get called, you're not gonna get it to get called. You have to add it into your game plan. And I will show you how to do that. 
But just know that if you see a play in this playbook here, just because it's in your playbook does not mean it's in your game plan. And if it's not in your game plan and you're playing CPU, it's probably not gonna get called unless you go through so many plays that it has no choice but to call that play. And now once you have gone through this, you can go to the next tab. This is all plays. So this is every single formation and set that is available in the game for you to use. And you can also adjust your playbook from here. So if you're at my playbook and you wanna see what all plays are available for this particular set, you can do that because sometimes it doesn't have every play available for that set. So for instance, in the Packers playbook here, we have I form close flex, and you can see that these are the plays that are that they have added to their playbook. However, if you go to all plays, go down to I form, go to close flex, you can see that there are a number of plays that are available for this particular set, but not added in your particular playbook. And this is the spot where you can add or take away plays from the playbook that you are working with. So if you are somebody who maybe doesn't like this halfback ISO out of this formation, all you have to do is simply click X or I believe A on Xbox and it will uncheck the box. And now this play is not in your playbook. It'll remove it from your game plan altogether. So be careful doing this because let's say um, here, 94 will. This is in our red zone playbook, our backed up and goal line playbook. If I unclick this, it's going to clear those stars out. And when I click it back in, those stars are now gone. So if you unclick a box on accident, make sure you go back and recheck where you want them put into your game plan because it automatically takes them out. Does not remember it once it's removed from the playbook. It clears it all out together. So what I would do in this scenario is I would go through this book and I would find the formations that I like and I would look through the formations in all plays and I would decide which of the plays that I want out of this particular formation, maybe some that I want to take out, maybe some that I want to add like halfback ISO and move on to my next one. That is the first step, getting the plays that you want down. If you look down at the bottom right here in this box, you're going to see the counts here. Play count, plays and set. This is your your, your guide to how many plays you can have. You can only have 500 plays per playbook. I highly suggest not having a maxed out playbook because it's just gonna throw everything through a loop and sometimes make the game plan seem a little, it, it's gonna be sporadic, right? It's not gonna have a lot of meaning to it. It's not gonna be a lot of uh, real thought behind it. So don't just spam add every play because you're just doing yourself a disservice. You don't need 14 different halfback dives. Find a halfback dive out of a few sets, great. You don't need a halfback dive out of all 14 sets that you have in your playbook, okay? So you can have up to 57 sets. I believe that's all the sets that are available in this game. I could be mistaken there, but essentially those are sort of your base numbers as to how many you can have of everything. I never wanna have 500. You're gonna see a lot of playbooks have anywhere from about 350 to 400 and like 50, but none of them are usually maxed out at 500 and there's a reason for that. So once you have gone through and let's say, you know, let's go, let's go back to the, the Packers playbook here and let's go to shotgun, right? Maybe there's some shotgun sets that we're not very happy with. Maybe we don't want bunch wide in this particular set. There's 18 plays out of bunch wide. I don't like how they changed this at the bottom. This used to show you how many plays you had in this particular set, but it does not appear that that is the case anymore. But anyway, there's 18 plays here. So let's say we don't want to use this set at all. You have the ability to remove a set altogether um, and then you could replace it. Now, again, if you are doing CPU versus CPU, I would not recommend deleting five or six different sets and adding five or six different ones. That's gonna change the makeup of the team a lot. But if you wanna maybe take away one or two sets and add your own in, I think that would be okay as long as you do a good enough job in the game plan of keeping things together properly and not going too crazy with it. So once you do that, I'm, I'll show you how to do that here quick. So let's just say that bunch wide is something we don't like anymore. At the bottom, you can just click X to remove it or you can click triangle to remove all plays. So if I wanna just take bunch wide out altogether, I can just click triangle. It's gonna ask me if I wanna remove all the plays in the set. I'm gonna click yes. And now that that is gone. So now if we go to shotgun, we will no longer have bunch uh, bunch wide out there anymore. So what that does is it just freed up 18 plays in our play count. And now let's say I go back over here to all plays and I go to shotgun and I find a, a set that I really like. Like let's say five wide receiver trio. There's not a lot of books that have this anymore, right? Maybe I wanna add that to the playbook. Well, all I have to do 
go in here. We're gonna add the screen. We're gonna have the four verts facing. Oh, definitely want the cross. Stick route is something you wanna have. We're just gonna add all these plays in, right? We're just gonna completely add this in. And there we go. So now if I go back to my plays and go to shotgun, it will have that five wide receiver trio as an option for me now, and I can adjust things accordingly. So if you want plays added to a certain game plan, you're gonna need to change that here. And before we do that, I'm gonna show you what the game plan looks like so you have an idea of what you're getting into. So going all the way to the last tab here, this is your my game plan. There is different situations where these plays will be called. You have first down, pretty apparent. You have two minute offense, also pretty apparent. Most of these are pretty simple to know. Second and long, second and medium, second and short, third and long, third and medium, third and short. Keep in mind, it tells you on there what it means. So third and medium is anything between three and eight yards. Then that does make a difference. Third and medium, you don't need to have a deep running play because it could just be third and four, right? So you could get away with a slant there. You could get away with you know, uh, a stick route or something. You don't need to have a deep dig or a corner route or you know something else that might open up guys downfield a little bit more. It, now it could be a little bit longer. So you need to make sure that you're doing enough balancing of these books so that you're not putting yourself in a bad spot. As you get through, you're gonna get down to these and backed up. That means within five yards of your own goal line, right? So if you are 90 yards plus, 95 yards plus to get to the end zone, that's what this is gonna call. So it's gonna be a majority of your run plays are very, very quick pass plays like a double slants concept. Your conserved time. This is obviously when you're trying to not run out of the clock, like your hurry up type of offense. So this is gonna be your deep plays. Maybe your, your plays running towards the sideline, quick plays that can get out and quickly and you don't, you're not wasting a lot of time. Go for two. Self-explanatory. Goal line, within five yards. This is one that actually tripped me up a little bit when I first started doing this. Within five yards. So it does not mean literal goal line. It means within five yards. So if you have like, you know what? When I get to the one, I just want to run it straight up the middle of my halfback. Don't just load this up with just inside run plays because you are going to have situations where it's going to be first and goal from the five and instead of passing a slant or something that you might want in that situation with that type of depth to the end zone, you're just going to be running straight up the middle every time and then you're going to be, you're going to get frustrated. So keep in mind, read what it tells you so that you know that you're setting it properly. This one is goal line pass. Now, this is not something that is just meaning anytime you're at the goal line. As you read there, it says when time is critical. So you almost want to consider this with your conserved time, but when you're closer to the end zone. So this is where if you're trying to, you know, if you're trying to get in the end zone quickly, you don't want to put a bunch of run plays in here because obviously that's not going to help you conserve time. Hail Mary, this is for a desperation pass at the end of the half or a game. Red zone. I am not a fan of the red zone. It looks as if they made a newer situation with this, which I'm happy for. Red zone is anywhere between five and 20 yards. And if you're trying to add plays where it's like a one shot, like maybe 15, 20 yards downfield, that's fine. Just don't do too many of them because I've done it before where I add a bunch of plays that I'm trying to like, you know, beat them one time for 20 yards. And I wasn't thinking, even though I should have been that I might end up having to run these plays out of the six yard line. I can't be running deep posts and deep digs at the six yard line. I need undercutting routes. I need quick outs. I need slants. I mean, you know, I need stick routes. So anywhere between the five and 20. Now, can you add plays that go deep? Yes, you can. Well, not deep, but you know, 15, 20 yards downfield, but try to add plays that maybe have a, like here, smash dagger. Yes, the primary receiver is a deep dig, but you have a halfback in the in the flats here or the, in the little dump off route. You have a short out here with the tight end. You have other options so that way, if it is closer to the goal line, you don't necessarily need to have all that space to let the receiver run. Red zone fringe is the one they added this year. This is brand new. This was not in last year's game, I don't think. If I'm mistaken, I know it's new since I did my last video. This just means anything inside the 30 to the 21. So right outside of the red zone and up to the 30 yard line. This is where you could probably put some of those shot plays because you know you need at least 20 yards to the end zone every time where you have that wiggle room to run some deeper concepts. 
you know, or still run some pass. Don't forget about the run, okay? I'm telling you right now, if you don't heavily like emphasize the run in these, these situations, they're never gonna get called. I'll explain that in a little bit here once we're done with going through the situations. Run out clock, again, pretty self-explanatory. A lot of your run plays here, just you're trying to get to the end of the game or under the half, whatever the clock, whatever the situation is. And then that is it. So that is all of the situations you have to worry about. Now, the other tip for you guys is you're gonna look here. Every playbook has its own situation uh, layout. This one, for instance, there's only one play that has four stars. There's a whole bunch of plays that have three and a half stars. And there's some that have three, some that have two and a half, and one that has two. This is telling you that these plays up here are more likely to get called and should be called more frequently than the plays down here. When I am adjusting a playbook like the Packers and I add a play to first down, I am going to add it within these boundaries. I'm not gonna make it five stars. I'm not gonna make it one star. I'm gonna stick to what they have already used because I feel like this better coincides with what the computer is already trying to accomplish and it doesn't mess with the algorithm of the playbook behind the scenes as much as it would if you just created something from scratch. So for first down, if I really wanted a play to be called and I want it to be a prevalent play, I'm gonna give it three and a half or maybe four stars. I'm not gonna make it five stars because now it's just throwing off what the, the playbook is already accustomed to. And now some of this is more so my own thoughts. I don't have facts to back this up. I just have feeling and what I see when I do these playbooks myself to back it up. And from what I can see from my testing and my playthroughs, it's better if you follow the diagram that they already give you. So for first down, we know that our bigger plays are gonna be three and a half. We're gonna have some threes and some two and a halves. And when you get to two minute offense, you will see certain ones where it's just half stars for everything. The reason for that is because there is no rhyme or reason. You just need these plays to be available for to be called. And there's not exactly any type of setup that is required, right? So going to first down, you can see like, okay, we want to try to get them on a flood switch quick downfield, but we have the dump off route on the little zig route on the slot. We also want to make sure we're running the ball. So we have a lot of run plays up here to set the tempo. And then down here, maybe for later game situations, maybe we try to take a shot on one of these plays or something, you know? Um, two minute offense, it's all hands on deck. Give us some good route concepts and just let us work. So that's why you're gonna see a lot of just half stars. And I would stick to that. If I'm adding something to my two minute offense, I'm just gonna make it a half star and leave it as such. Second and long, you can see that this one is sort of similar to first down, but it's a little bit different. This one does not have as many plays. And don't feel upset about how many you put in these categories. Like if you see that there is let's just say 20 plays in this entire situation and you you don't want to add more plays, but you just want to change what's there, just stick to, to this, right? It's, it's okay if you have more than one play as a four star rated. Just make sure you're not adding 50 plays to a situation because again, that's going to confuse the algorithm of, the, of Madden. It's going to confuse the game itself. It's going to throw it into it. It's just going to seem like there's no rhyme or reason and you don't want to do that. So if you want to have 20 plays in a situation, I think that's a, a pretty good number. Then you can organize these however you want. Just make sure you follow along. So the plays that you barely want, half star, do a one star for maybe an in-between play, two stars for when you're starting to want them to be called more often. You get into the three star territory and the three and a half, you know that these are plays that should be called more frequently. Now, what this is telling me is that when I'm in second and long, this playbook is calling slot outs and smash dagger a lot more than it is any of these plays down here. And if I want more variety, I might either have to bring this down to three to three stars, or I'm gonna have to bring some of these up to three and a half, four stars to, to copy and, and get up there into the, the higher echelon of play calling for my game. And I just go through every single one and I do that. One thing I will recommend is if you are in situations where running is more preferred, like first down, for instance, or maybe uh, second and medium, second and short, um, try to front load run plays and it's going to look like you're just going to run the ball all game. And I'm telling you right now, it's still going to pass the ball quite a bit. I remember a playbook I did a couple of Maddens ago. I had like every run play imaginable in every situation where I would like to see us run the ball. And I still had like pass plays about 30% of the time in those situations. So don't be afraid to add the extra run or two into these situations to get to make sure you're getting that balance because we all know madden's balance of, of running is horrendous 
you almost need to put one of these books together to have a realistic back and forth for run pass ratio. So you have gone through and now you sort of understand these ratings. You understand, you know, okay, I know in third and long, I, I want to have the plays that I'm going to call my money plays up here at the three and a half, maybe four and a half. But the plays that I'm a little iffy on are going to be down here on our half stars or maybe our two stars if I like them a little bit more than that. Now it's time to figure out, oh, well, what am I going to do with that? The easiest thing I've done in the past is I go the playbook. I go through the plays that I want to add. And all I do is I add them as a half star. Okay. So if I'm going to rate the play, I just go rate. You click left or right to add the star, right? Left or you click right to add more star, left to take it away. I'm just going to add it as a one star and you add it to every single one that you want it to. So let's say halfback sting here. I want it on fourth and short. Um, I'm okay with having it on backed up. I have enough on first. I'm going to pass on that. Um, third and short. Yes. Uh, goal line. I want it there. Goal for two. I want it there. Now, when I finish this and go back and come back to this play, it's going to bring all the ones that I put a star on up to the top. So you don't have to worry about it being buried down there as to what, where it is. It's going to show you at the top where it's most likely to be called. So that way you can see it right away. And if I want to make an adjustments to it, I can do that as well. So if I go down here and I'm like, you know, let's go to I formation. Uh, wing. I'm not a fan of wing being called on second and short that often. So maybe I want to change it to a half star, right? Because now I can go back and adjust it. So if I add that to half star, or maybe I want strong stretch to be in certain formations, I can go ahead and hit square to, to go to the edit screen. And maybe I want this on, I don't know, second and medium. We're going to add it there. Oh, now it's on second and medium. So now when I go to my game plan and I go to these, second and medium, I know that if I go to the bottom of my list, any play that I added is going to be here and I can just immediately change it to what I want. So like, okay, I'm at second and medium. What is the layout here? We have three stars. We have three and a half. And then the ones that are getting called a lot are four and a half. I don't know if I want it to be called all the time, but I do want it to be called a good chunk of time. So I'm going to make this three and a half to go along with half pack power G. So I'll just go here, change it to three and a half. And then when I come back to it, you will now see that strong stretch is right here with power G at the three and a half marker. And you just go through all of your plays and you do that. So you're going to go here, add them to the situations you want them to be in with a half star, then go to your game plan, go to the bottom and just go through all the ones that are half stars there and adjust them accordingly some of them like the two minute offense are already half stars so if you add them to this they're automatically going to be in rotation with the rest of them so you don't have to worry about that and like i mentioned before you want to try to stick to what the playbook is already offering if there's 20 plays in a situation like two minute offense don't make it 40. try to stick to 20. even if that means taking a few of these out and, ch and replacing them I, I like to do the replace method instead of just the the build up method because the more you add to these books the more confusing it can get for the computer to make the decisions on what to call. And I don't want that in those situations. So try to contain yourself. You know, remember that if you're running slants, you probably have a slant out of every single set you have in your book. You don't need to add it every set that you see it in because then you're going to end up with 17 slant plays in a single situation. And it just, it muddies up the whole system. You'll get plays where you're just calling slants back to back and you put it yourself in a bad spot. So some of this is not something I can teach. Some of this is just understanding the game and understanding what you want to do with your playbook and knowing how to get it forward. So there might be a little trial and error in here if this is something that you're new to, but I'm telling you right now, if you go through the trials of it, you do your testing, you find a sweet spot, you're going to be so much happier with your play calling when you're watching these games and you won't be sitting there like trying to pull your hair out because you don't understand why we're running it on third and, and forever because the, the Madden, for whatever reason, had a random run play in your third and long situation. So once you're done with all your playbook, you're gonna go ahead and save it. Save it to whatever you want. The other reason that you wanna try and save these playbooks and have them similar to that of an already existing book, because when you get to your franchise and you have to set your schemes, if you create your own, your own book, setting the scheme is gonna be difficult. And I don't think the system knows how to properly pick it up. Like, I feel like, the Packers are a West Coast zone run, right? If I completely gut the Packers playbook and change it to something that I think is a vertical power run 
and then I try to change the scheme to that. I think it confuses the system. I think the, the system behind it knows what playbooks technically sort of work with the scheme. And yes, you can say that they don't matter, but to me, they do matter in CPU play to some degree and how the players react to things and how the playbooks are set up. So when I'm adjusting a playbook, I'm going off of what the playbook already offers for a scheme and I'm trying to, to keep it to that. So I'm gonna set it to that in my franchise screen so I know that if I'm setting formation subs, that I can do that and it's actually going to affect my book. So when I have the Packers set now, I'm gonna leave the Packers as my normal playbook in the, the, the manage teams tab. And then when I go to the, the game menu, I can change it to my custom book, but any formation sub that I do is still going to carry because it's still registered as the same book and you have the same sets in there. So if you add extra formations to your playbook, you're gonna have to understand that you're gonna take the L on being able to set the formation subs for that particular set because it's not gonna carry over because that screen for some reason only shows the base playbook that you have set as your playbook. So that's another big reason why you keep it similar to the book that you're building off of because now your formation subs are still available to you because you have about 80 to 90% of the same playbooks already in there for your custom set. So that is everything for the offense. And I'm gonna be very honest with you guys. I would love to go over defense, but every time I have adjusted a defensive book, it has been the same story. It just seems to get really wonky. So everything I've said for the offensive books, copy the same thing for the defense, but try not to change everything. Like if you go to a playbook, right? Let's say the bears and you look at what their game plan is. You can see that this playbook calls a lot of cover one and cover six and cover four, right? It's, it's very particular to certain looks in certain situations. It's a lot of cover four, cover two, you don't, a, a few cover three, but you see up here, the four main plays are cover four quarters, cover two hard flats, and some more cover two and cover four concepts. Don't come in here and try to change this playbook to cover three fully or a bunch of man blitzing because the, the playbook is not set up for it. This is one where you wanna take what I said and you wanna literally follow it to a T, if not more than I even said so. Try not to change too much about the defensive playbooks. If anything, maybe add a couple of plays into a set, maybe take out a play or two, but don't go adding a bunch of formations. Don't go changing up everything on it because it really seems to throw the defense through a loop much more than it does the offense. And it it almost makes it seem like the, the book stops being able to to redo itself, like to, to make adjustments on the fly, like you can for your offense. It just takes away all thinking sometimes. So be very cautious when doing it with the defense. You have the ability to make minor adjustments, but just know the defensive books are very, very tricky when it comes to making my, like any type of major adjustments to them in this custom playbook screen. So that is essentially everything. I mean, I went through it all. Yes, this is sort of a repeat video, but I felt like there was enough time since the last one that people could maybe be looking for a refresher or maybe some people that have picked up Madden 25 didn't even play Madden 23 and are never gonna search for it on YouTube. And I wanna make sure that I help everybody out. So if this did help you, please consider hitting that like button, subscribing if you are not already, turning on that bell notification, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.